Hey there, I'm Soundy, and this is how to make a top-down 2D RPG in Unity. Welcome to Episode 6, Player Camera and Collision. In this episode, we'll be making the camera follow the player and adding collision to the player to prevent them from walking into the water. Right, to get started, let's go ahead and take a look where we left off last time. So I'm just going to have Tentiful Screen, I'm going to control P to play, and if we just move our character around with W, S, and D, see moves he's got his movement animation and when we let go he's got his little cool idle animation now today what we're going to want to do is as he moves we're going to want the camera to follow him so i'm just going to stop the game running this couldn't be any easier all we need to do go up to package manager now if you don't see this window just go window and then package manager then what you're going to want to do is just click this little drop down and go unity registry okay and from this list find Cine Machine and hit install. Cine Machine is sort of your one-stop shop for all your camera needs. I'd highly recommend learning it and you can basically use this in every single project. I use it in all mine. Now, once this goes ahead and brings itself in, it's a small package by the way, so it won't blow your project. What we're gonna wanna do, is switch over to our scene view and we're gonna wanna go over to our hierarchy. We're gonna right click and then we're gonna take a look down our list here. You can see we've now got Cine Machine added and we're going to select 2D camera. Now that's going to add in a new virtual camera into our hierarchy. And we're just going to rename this to be player cam just to keep ourselves organized. And in our inspector here, you can see we've got the Cine Machine virtual camera component. Now we only need to worry about two things here. This follow field, this is going to be what our camera follows. And this lens ortho size is going to determine how zoomed in or zoomed out it is. Okay, so if we just drag this around on the lens ortho size, you can see in the game view down there that the smaller the number, the more zoomed in, and the larger, the less. And we're just going to type 8 in there. That's going to look nice for us. And we're just going to grab the player, and we're going to drag and drop that into the follow. Okay, I'm going to control S, I'm going to F10, and then I'm going to control P to play. And we can see now our player is moving around and the camera is nicely following them. We've got a little bit of easing going on, so it's not snapping too hard. That makes it nice and smooth. And the player will happily be able to move around anywhere and the camera will freely follow. Now, this is the next thing we're gonna address. We can walk into the water. Okay, so let's go ahead and start fixing that. The first thing we're gonna wanna do is add collision to the player themselves. So if we go ahead and select our player, okay? And then in our inspector over here, we're just gonna wanna change our rigid body 2D to dynamic. Okay, and our gravity scale here to zero. Otherwise, the player is just going to fall off the bottom of the screen. Well, now, with that done, we're going to want to add a new component to define the collision. We're going to go with Box Collider 2D. Okay, and if we look here now, you can see a box has appeared around our player, and that defines the extent of his collision. Now, over here in the hierarchy, if we just quickly add a 2D object, sprites and then square we can start to build something that the player can push around now this is currently rendering behind everything so let's first set it to the character sorting layer then it's in front so we can see it we're now just going to want to add a box collider 2d and we're also going to want to add a rigid body 2d and again we're just going to change gravity scale to zero i'm going to freeze the rotation on the z and i'm just going to add a little bit of linear drag this is going to cause it to slow slow down after it's been pushed. Otherwise, if you leave it at zero, once you push it, it'll just fly off. So with that done, we're just going to F10 again to full screen, Control P to play, and boom. Our player can now push this little square around. And honestly, this can be used as the basis for a whole bunch of different systems um, and even games, right? Like the whole Sokuban genre is literally pushing boxes around. Now for us though, we're going to slightly tweak this. If you notice when we push from below, the player's head is pushing the box. Looks a little bit unnatural. So let's just spend a moment to tweak that. And to do that, we're just going to focus on the player and we're going to adjust this collision box. So we're going to select them in the hierarchy and then we're going to come over here into our inspector and we're going to just pick this little button down here called edit the collider geometry. If we hit that, you'll notice that in our scene view, we've now got these little handles we can grab. And if we click and grab those, we can manipulate this collider. 
Okay, and what we're going to do is just wrap this around the player's body, which is just this little bit at the bottom. You don't need to be super accurate, but if you want to move both sides at once, by the way, you can hold Alt, and then that lets you do it a little bit quicker. So with that done, if we now just F10, Control P, if we come to push the box, you'll notice we're pushing it with our body instead of with our head. And it looks a little bit more natural when we're pushing from below. And when we're pushing from the top, again, it's just colliding in with the player, the player's body, so it's just looking really nice. Okay, so what we're next going to want to do is deal with the situation where we're able to walk out into the water, right? So what we want to do ideally is leverage our tile map, which if we come over here to our hierarchy and go world and then grid and then ground, we're going to want to leverage these tiles we've placed to use this red outline we're going to want that to be defining our collision now so that we can't walk out from this tile map. So to do that, it's nice and easy. We're going to add a new component to this, and it's going to be the tile map collider 2D. OK, now when I've added this, you can see it's now popping all these tiles and these are now all collidable. So our player wouldn't be able to move at all. That's not what we want. We don't want the interior to be collidable. We want just this edge. Now to do that, all we've got to do, add component, and we're going to go composite collider 2D. Now this is going to add a ridge body 2D, and all we've got to do in this drop down here, set it to be static, and we don't have to worry about that again. So what we need to do, which is a critical step that is very, very easy to miss, is hit this used by composite in the tile map collider 2D. If you fail to hit this, it won't register our Composite Collider 2D and you'll be scratching your head for ages wondering what's gone wrong. All you've got to do, take that box, boom. Now you'll notice this has changed. I'll just demonstrate that again here so you can see. So we've got all these individual tiles and then we hit Use by Composite and suddenly they all go away and the edge becomes more pronounced. What we can do to further pronounce this edge is just down at the bottom here, we've got this edge radius. If we go ahead and set that to be 0.1, for example, you'll notice immediately this pops, right? So this is gonna be super useful for us debugging, but also this is gonna be useful for a bunch of other things. We are gonna leave it at like 0.1. So if we go ahead now and play, you can see I can no longer walk out into open water, right? However, you will immediately notice it can his bag still walk sort of into the water. It's looking a little bit janky, right? And if we push our box as well, our box is also affected by this, which is great. So let's now define a custom physics shape for each of these tiles so that we can tell this composite collider and our tile map collider, we're going to say, hey, use just this area instead of the whole tile, right? So to do that in our project panel down here, we go game, then world. We're going to do forest sprites and we're going to select our tile map okay now over here in the inspector we're just going to select sprite editor okay and that's going to open up our sprite editor window now again this is another place where we can easily mess up we need to select this drop down at the top and we need to select custom physics shape okay really easy to miss that so here we're just going to zoom in and we've got these eight tiles here and these four tiles all represent our sort of ground. So we're just going to do one for now, and then we'll come back and do the rest. But what I'm going to do, select one. So I'm just left clicking into selected, and I'm going to click and drag with the left mouse button. Okay. If you notice there, it clicked and dragged, and it nicely placed this box over. But let's say I missed it and it went everywhere. You can just grab these vertices and drag them to wherever you want, right? So don't worry. And if you click and accidentally add in a new vertice, you can either select it and then hit delete to remove it, or you can use Control Z to undo. Okay, so don't worry if you drag it out and it doesn't look like this, just position it so it does. I'm lining mine up with just the edge of the grass where it's just the green bit. So all I'm gonna do is hit apply. I'm then gonna close the sprite editor. I'm gonna select the ground layer, and you can see this hasn't updated yet. Okay, so we can do two things to update it. We can either just disable the tile map collider 2D and then enable it, and that tends to work. However, sometimes that doesn't work. 
in which case you may need to right click on it and you may need to hit reset. Now what that's going to do is uncheck the used by composite. So then we're just going to recheck that and that's going to update it for us. Now you can see here, it's updated all across our tile map. So not just on those instances, but all over. This is perfect for what we need, right? You can see this is a much better place to be colliding with versus where we were before, which was out here in the water. So if we just run the game real quick, just to test that that is indeed working, that is as far as I can go. And then again, I'm holding right, and that is as far as I can go. But if we come up here, immediately, we're still able to walk into the water. So let's go ahead and fix that. So I'm just gonna undo that. If we now go back to our sprite sheet and then sprite editor, and again, clicking this drop down into the custom physics shape, and we're just gonna zoom in. Now, we're gonna go through each one of these now and do exactly the same. I'm just gonna click and drag, but with this one, we've got a little bit more of a, a tricky area here to do. So we're actually gonna wanna click in to add a new vertice, okay? But then I'm also going to want to click in between these two to add another vertex. And I'm just going to drag that out to where I want it. Okay, and again, I'm just going to drag this across. You see now how we form this L shape? That's what we're looking for. And again, if you'd have clicked down here and you know what I mean, everything's a bit misaligned, it's perfectly fine. Just click and drag, drag it into the right place. So this is a nice easy one. I'm just clicking in to select the tile. Then I'm left clicking and dragging to drag out our square there or rectangle. Again, same here, just gonna drag this out. Then I'm gonna click to place our vertex, click again to paste, place another one, and then I'm gonna drag those out. And we're just gonna go through all these. So again, click and drag. Let's just make sure that actually worked. And you can cross reference, right? And be like, hey, you know what I mean? Like, have I definitely lined these up? And you'll notice here straight away, we've got one slightly misaligned. So I'm just gonna go in and fix that. And honestly, it doesn't matter if you're super precise here, really. Um, obviously, try your best, but if it is a little bit off, the player probably won't notice. Um, but where possible, you know what I mean? Being precise is, is useful. You don't have to be super precise, like, not all the time. But we're just clicking and dragging again, and then we're just adding in vertices. You know, as close to where we think is, is reasonable, and then we can just double check our work after. There we go. So we've done those eight. Now let's come in and do these four. Again, we're just trying to define this sort of like walkable area, if you will. Uh, and it doesn't have to be super, super precise, but I'm just, see, see, I messed up there. So I control Z did, fixed everything, no problem. And again, I'm just cross-referencing with that other one and being like, okay, you know what I mean? Like, let's make sure they sort of line up just for the sake of consistency. Okay, that's perfect. So if we hit apply, and then close this down and then go ahead and select our ground layer. Now you'll notice again, this hasn't updated yet. So I'm just going to toggle this off and back on and boom. And again, if this doesn't work by toggling it on and off, you can right click and reset. OK, and there is other ways of doing it, too, but that should uh, that should sort you out. So with that, we can now just play and let's go and check. And this is perfect, right? And again, you'll notice because we changed our player's collider, his head can sort of like stick over the edge, if you will. But that actually looks kind of natural here, right? Makes it feel um, feel pretty natural. So if we take a look around, we can see all of our collisions working nicely. And even with our box as well, we've already tested this right hand side. So let's just push it up here and test this. And then we can push this box into the corner. Okay, there we go. You can see it nicely fits there. That's perfect. So now you might be thinking, well, what if we edit the tile map? How does that affect it? So if we go ahead and select our ground layer, and then we double check we are selected on the correct layer. We select our rule tile that we made. If we now add this in, you'll notice straight away, all of the collision is updating quite nicely. So we can just build a little bridge here between these two, okay? And then if we go ahead and play, and let's take our box with us too. You know what I mean? Can't, uh, can't forget your box. Okay, that's now stuck there. But yeah, you can see all of our collision working very nicely. We can no longer go into the water, okay? And anything we make that is bound to the physics engine also can't either, which is great. This is exactly what we're looking for, right? So it was nice and easy. All we've done, spot Cinema Machine in, and then added a couple of components onto our objects. We haven't had to write any code because all of our code that we've already written is working with the physics engine. 
So that's kind of perfect for what we need. So that's how to add camera follow and tile map collisions. In the next tutorial, we'll be adding collectible gems and a simple UI to keep track of them. If you're enjoying the content, swing by the Discord and let me know what else to make a video on. Thanks for all your comments and I'll see you next time guys.